Hey, welcome in my ASVAB party people. Coach Anderson here, let's get the job done. So we have this question here and it's definitely involving fractions. So how do we handle it? As always, first things first, my party people, what do we want? Then what do we have? Then what's the connection? So here we are. How many pounds of dough are left over after making the loaves? Sounds good. So how many pounds are left over after making the loaves? Sweet. So what we're going to do is, well, we know that we're looking for how much is left over. And typically when we talk about how much is left, isn't it fair to say that that might mean that we're subtracting because we're taking something away to see how much is left over? So boom, right there, that might give you a hint. You know, don't get cocky, don't get overconfident, but let's check out the information to see if that narrative fits. So here we are. Yep, left over. A baker has a full batch of dough that weighs 12 and a half pounds. She uses seven and three quarters pounds of the dough to make loaves of bread. So right there, that tells me, hey, this is how much we have. So has 12 and a half pounds. And then it shows that she uses seven and three quarters pounds of dough. So boom, right there. Yeah, this is a pretty quick and straightforward one for us. Don't, don't worry, we're going to do another problem right after this. I got you. So the main setup here is going to be to find out how much is left over. We'll simply proceed to say, hey, we have 12 and a half pounds. And we're going to be subtracting from that seven and three quarters. And that's it. That's really all we're looking forward to doing. So let's go ahead, take care of business, and then we'll move right along to the next problem. And don't forget, if today's Monday for you, we have a free class on Zoom tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time for two hours. So just go ahead and check out the link in the description of this video, or feel free to text us if you wanna join that free class. We've got your back, and we're here to help you raise your score. So here we are, 12 and a half minus seven and three quarters. Let's get it in our business. So here we just need to remember the rules for fractions. How do we subtract fractions? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that we have the same denominator. We don't have the same denominator here, which means that we're not really talking about the fractions in, so in the same sort of pieces or slices. So we need to have the same denominator. And also, I notice that we have mixed numbers. We have a whole number 12 and seven. So quite easily, quite simply put, let's just go ahead and get the same denominator, then turn the fractions into improper fractions, and then subtract. Here we go. So two and four, we can get the same denominator of four. If we multiply two by two, we can definitely get to four. So that's what I'll do here. Multiply by two in the numerator and denominator, changing our mixed number over here to 12 and two fourths. So now that we have that, now we're good to proceed and then change these into improper fractions. How do we do that again? Super simple. We take the whole number, and we multiply it by the denominator. Because remember, the denominator tells you the value of the whole, like what one whole is. So that's four. We have 12 of those, and we have the two left over. So 12 times four is 48, plus the two, that'll be 50. So that's 50 over four. And then when we take a look over here, we have seven multiplied by four, which is 28, plus three is 31. So we have 31 over four right there. So notice we're pretty good now, right? We can go ahead and subtract, super simple. 50 minus 31, what will that be? That'll be 19, and that's still gonna be over four. Remember when you are subtracting or adding fractions, we will keep that denominator. So here we are, and now the last thing we need to do, well, let's check the answer choices. Notice that we have mixed numbers, four and a half, four and three quarters, five and a quarter. So we definitely need to turn this back into a mixed number. So how do we do that? Well, we simply go ahead and see how many holes we have by dividing the 19 by the 4. So we'll go ahead and do 4 goes into 19. 4 goes into 1, it doesn't, but it goes into 19 exactly 4 times. Well, not exactly, because we have some left over. So this right here is going to be the hole. This is our hole. So that will be a hole 4. And then our remainder right here, that's the 3. So three right there over four. Remember, we keep that denominator the same, but there it is. Th four and three quarters of a pound or pounds. Either way you want to say it, we're good, but that will be answer choice B right there.
So take a second, pause the video if you need to, or rewind. I got your back all the way, my party people. And don't forget, remember, we got free classes once a week, every week for two hours. So make sure to go ahead and check the link out in the description or shoot us a text if you need ASVAB help. Just ask about the free class. I got your back, my party people. So let's move forward now to the next question. Let's try this next one out right over here. So feel free again, pause the video if you want to, but I'm gonna proceed and get this done. So first things first, what do we do? Well, we notice the question, always, always, always. How many total pounds of flour did the baker use to make the two batches of cookies? So right there, how many total pounds? So whenever we see the word total, typically we're trying to find you know, everything together, right? And sometimes that might mean addition, most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't. But let's go ahead and see what the information that we have is because we wanna figure out what the total pounds of flour is. So I guess wherever we say pounds of flour, we're gonna be adding everything up. So cool, now that we have that in our heads, let's go ahead and take a look at the information. So at a bakery, a baker uses two and a quarter pounds of flour to make a batch of chocolate chip cookies in the morning. In the afternoon, he uses this much flour to make snickerdoodles. Okay, so it sounds like, to me, we have a baker who's using flour for this and then for that, and we're just trying to see how many total pounds we used. I think that's pretty straightforward. You know, remembering how to actually work with fractions, that's one thing. But anybody, even if you don't know how to work with fractions, anybody can see that finding the total pounds of flour, and then we have this many pounds of flour and that many pounds of flour, I think for anybody out there, that could make sense. Now, this is going to show what we're most nervous about. Is it the setup or is it going to be the actual calculation? So here we are. Let's go ahead and write everything down. We have two and a half pounds of flour here, three and three eighths pounds of flour there. And let's write that here. So two and a half or two and a quarter, excuse me. And we'll add that with three and three eighths. Sweet. So this is going to be the math that we're doing. That's going to give us the total pounds of flour. So already I can see that, hey, we have two and three. That's going to be five. So I'm just going to say five so far. And then we'll go ahead and work with this on the side, the one quarter. Let me go ahead and use green. So we use the one quarter and the three eighths. We'll do that on the side over here. So one quarter plus three eighths. And this isn't going to be terribly difficult because we take a look here and we say, hey, four can definitely go into eight. Remember, we need the same denominator. Four can definitely go into eight. I don't have to change both of the fractions, just this one right over here. So what I'll do is I'll multiply the numerator and denominator by two. Remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And there we are. And so once we're there, we see that this right here will turn into two over eight plus three over eight, which gives us five over eight. And so we'll bring this back right over here. And there's our answer. Five and five-eighths pounds of flour. Booyah. And we are good, my party people. Again, it can be pretty straightforward. Now, these are some introductory questions. I'll definitely admit that. But in tomorrow's video, if you're staying tuned, if you're subscribed to the channel, I'll be releasing some more difficult questions and challenge questions because if you're watching this the day it came out, today we're doing a fractions word problem class. Again, it's free. And then tomorrow, for those in my program, we'll go ahead and continue the conversation and have a challenge class where we'll be going over more difficult questions and really helping you get over that test anxiety. So again, everybody, my name's Coach Anderson. If you're not already following us, please go ahead and kindly do so. Leave a comment if we're helping you out. And then text us right there at 567-698-8867 if you have any questions at all. I got your back all the way until you pass, my party people. Let's raise our scores, get the jobs we want. And I'll see you in the next video and hopefully the next class. Cheers, everybody. Love y'all.